All right. Is it time? I it's, think it's time. It's, it's time. time. Let's, let's do it. Yeah. All right, Antonio. Let's do it. All right, check it, y'all. We got a math <laughs> question. It asks, oh, what is the length of the hypotenuse of this right triangle? With base, 12 centimeters. Height, 16 centimeters. Try so, that. Sounds like a me question. It's a you question. So I'm going to redraw this, but I'm apparently drawing it the opposite way. Doesn't really matter, though. So we've got a right triangle, so we're going to use, we're solving the hypotenuse, so we're going to use the old Pythagorean theorem. The old Pythagorean yeah, theorem? Good old Pythagorean. All right. Cool guy. He was. He read his bio. It was crazy. How we did all that <laughs> math and then found out that stuff. Yeah. All right. So we got, we got this right triangle. We got one leg is 16 centimeters and the other leg is 12 centimeters, and we are looking for the hypotenuse, and in this case, we're calling it C. So, typically what you always hear is Pythagorean theorem is A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Um, I kind of sometimes like to think about this as like leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared, because it kind of helps you think about this a little bit differently, like this is a leg, this is a leg. So if you remember parts of a right triangle, we have two legs, and then we have the hypotenuse. And the hypotenuse is just the longest leg. It's the longest because it's straight across from the 90 degree angle, the right angle. So all we're going to do is plug this into our equation, and we're going to say A squared. It doesn't really matter which one you say is A, which one is B. So I could say that this is A, and I could say that this is B right here. The order for the legs doesn't really matter. The important thing is that the hypotenuse is on the side of the equation by itself. So all I'm going to do is plug this in. 16 squared plus 12 squared equals c squared. And then this just comes down to simplifying uh, this equation and solving. 16 squared is, I can't think of it right now, 16 squared. I can't think of it I think it it's 256. But yeah, that sounds right. But yeah, 256. Nice. Yeah. So 16 squared is 256 plus 12 squared, which is 144. That is going to equal C squared. And we're going to continue simplifying. Uh, nice numbers. Yeah, 256 plus 144 is 400 equals C squared. Uh, and then this is where a lot of times students get hung up because this is like kind of the first time they're really solving a lot of like, squared um, equation. So you're thinking, um, okay, how do I solve for C when it's C squared? All we're doing is like we always do, we're doing the inverse. So what's going to undo this operation of C squared? And we are just going to do the square root. That's going to undo that. So we end up with C equals 20. And again, I always like to throw this out there. Technically, algebraically, and mathematically, this would be plus or minus 20 because positive 20 squared is 400 and negative 20 squared is 400. But because we're talking about the lengths of pieces of this triangle, we think about this negative number and it doesn't make any sense. So our answer is just going to be 20. And one way I like to also quickly check this, um, because I like to check my answers, is remember the hypotenuse should always be the longest um, side of a triangle, of a right triangle. So if you ever get a number and it's, the hypotenuse is smaller than any of the other legs, you made a mistake. So it's just kind of a quick check. Right. What could the mistake be that they made if they get something smaller? Typically uh, is setting it up wrong mm -hmm. and not identifying that you're solving for the hypotenuse. And I'll give you a quick example since you asked that, and I see this all the time. Um, what if I had another triangle um, and I wasn't solving for the hypotenuse. And so this is typically the only, aside from just like a, like a math mistake or a mental math mistake, mm -hmm. is if you're solving for, like let's say I know this is 13, this is 5, and this is x. So solving for a leg and maybe somebody putting yeah. the hypotenuse as one of the legs in the equation. Yeah, so mistake might be 5 squared plus 13 squared. Because mm. a lot of students, I wouldn't say a lot, but like half of my students seem to think 
or get this mixed up in their head that they're always solving for the hypotenuse. For the hypotenuse or for c squared or... Exactly. Right. So this is a pretty common mistake and thanks for pointing that out. All right, you got to think about what is my hypotenuse? So in this case, I'm not going to walk through the whole thing, but we would have to be careful and say 5 squared plus x squared equals 13 squared. Right. Yeah. And in that case, you would probably get something that wouldn't make sense. I mean, in, the, right. in this case, if you set it up incorrectly, like how you were showing, mm -hmm. um, you would get a number that's bigger than the hypotenuse, which yeah. doesn't really yeah. make sense. Yeah. And uh, that's kind of why I like to always think of it as leg squared plus leg squared mm -hmm. equals hypotenuse mm -hmm. squared, because yeah. then, I don't know, I feel like a lot of students are focused on the letters, and they're like, but there's no A here. And there's why no B. Why is it X? Right. And so think about just like the legs of the triangle, and you're thinking about, as you're thinking about it in your head, what are the legs in this figure? Mm -hmm. yeah. Makes a whole lot of sense. Yeah. And it's a, I think it's really good to point out some of the common misconceptions yeah. just because what to watch up, out for. Yeah.